question tonight about the man police said was the intended target of Saturday's mass shooting. Jeremiah Lee was connected to a New Orleans street gang. Lee's rap sheet shows a conviction for possession of marijuana in municipal court in 2009. But three subsequent felony cases were still pending when Lee was gunned down. An admitted member of the sprawling 3NG gang, named for their connection to the neighborhood around 3rd and Galvez. Lee was scheduled to appear in court on August 15th in each of those three open cases, but whoever was gunning for him made sure he would not be around to answer to the charges. Jamal Smith, a.k.a. Maul, a.k.a. Sickle, born in 1988, was raised in Uptown, New Orleans. Maul was a beast out here in these streets, beefing with the Magnolia, the Fisher, and Gertown. His most notorious beef would be with 3NG. This rivalry dates back as far as June 2006, when Arsenal and Marky, the brothers of Narky Hunter, were crushed in what we now know today as the Central City Massacre. It is alleged that Maul will crush AP off of 3NG, adding fuel to the flames that were all ready lit. In 2007, Arthur Dow, the older brother of Kareem Dow and Emmett Allen, will be deleted on 2nd and South Miro, allegedly at the hands of 3NG. It is alleged that in 2011, Narke Hunter, Terrius T. Red Oni, Tyrone T. Bone Knockham, and Charles Anderson would spin the bin on Emmett Allen, injuring him and in taking the life of young Kiara Holmes. Emmett would be crept down on by two whips. Gunfire would erupt in the 3300 block of Erato. The cars would speed off, leaving both victims. Tyrone Knockham would later be charged with the crime. We're here tonight because little Kira Holmes' life was taken senselessly two days ago on Arado Street at around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. In that same shooting, 19-year-old Emmett Allen was severely wounded and he's still listed in critical condition. I can tell you now that 23-year-old Narke Hunter, who we believe is one of the gunmen who opened fire on Arado Street Sunday, is in the custody of the NOPD and has been so since earlier today. Hunter was picked up by members of the U.S. Marshals Task Force this morning on, at a house on Wright Avenue in Terrytown. I can also tell you now that 26-year-old Charles Anderson, who was killed yesterday in the 2300 block of North Robinson, is believed to have been another person of interest in this shooting on Sunday. It wouldn't be long after the Calio gunfire that Charles Anderson would be found deleted inside of a home in the St. Rock 8 Ward neighborhood of New Orleans very frightening situation that I'm getting very tired of. Shooting in New Orleans. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Cherie Skipson. And I'm Katie Moore. It happened in the St. Rock neighborhood. It's going to be paralyzed by crime. That's how people living in the St. Rock community say they feel about their neighborhood. We're following two breaking news stories this morning. The first is in New Orleans. One man is in the hospital after a shooting in the St. Rock neighborhood. He's also investigating a separate shooting that took place just hours earlier. And OPD says this incident happened in the St. Rock area. Then in the St. Rock neighborhood, police said someone shot another man. At 6.05, we're following some breaking news. A man is dead after being shot in the St. Rock area. With the game soaked up from his big homies on failure, Mo by this time had earned his stripes and the whole city knew that he wasn't to be played with. In August of 2012, Kareem Dow would be hit up 20 times, losing his left leg. He would now be wheelchair bound. This would not be the last time that Kareem would be hit up. In 2016, he would be hit up three different times. The beef had spiraled out of control. Maul would stand tall in the paint, putting in work, and would seem untouchable. Arno Learson and Nathan McCray, known 3NG affiliates, will be the next targets. In September of 2016, they will be caught slipping on first in Claiborne. This unfortunately would take the life of Ernest McKnight, an innocent bystander. Ms. McKnight was an innocent bystander who was cut down by gunfire. But what about the intended targets? We have new details about their suspected ties to a notorious street gang. Paul Murphy joins us now with that story, Paul. Karen Tan, police now want to know if Sunday's shooting is part of a resurgence in gang-related violence in the city. While the NOPD searches for suspects in the case, 
friends of the murder victim are mourning his loss. The 63-year-old man killed in Sunday's mass shooting near First and Claiborne was a hardworking landscaper and well-liked neighbor on Rex Place in Central City. The woman next door said he loved to work in the garden in front of his house. We would have a conversation every morning. He'd ask me how I was doing, doing different things. He helped me to cut some of the grass across the street. Ernest McKnight had just walked down the street to buy a pack of cigarettes at the corner grocery store when shots rang out. A bullet hit him in the head, and he later died at University Medical Center. McKnight's other next-door neighbor said, unfortunately, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I had heard about the shooting, but I didn't know that he got hit until the next morning. And I, yeah, that just hurt me deeply. Meanwhile, the New Orleans advocate is quoting a law enforcement source that claims the two intended targets of the shooting, Arnold Learson and Nathan McRae, are members of 3NG a notoriously violent gang that once controlled the drug trade in the neighborhood near 3rd and Galvez in Central City. 19 of its members were convicted and sent to jail in a massive state racketeering case. WWL-TV crime analyst Jeff Asher. It's hard to say whether or not this shooting in Central City is part of a larger trend or it's just a single incident with, uh, with two individuals that were tied to a gang. With the mass shooting still fresh in their minds, neighbors know what a surge in gang violence could mean for their quality of life. I'm worried about my family. I could have been, me and my baby could have been walking around that gun to store at that time. And it could have been us. Hungry to retaliate, in December of 2016, Jeremiah Lee, aka Zippa, would crush Kareem Dow on St. Andrew Street. It wouldn't be long before the get back would happen. Zippa would be heat up in the 2400 block of South Derbany in January of 2017. Warning Maul badly, they would catch him in front of the courthouse. The doors on the minivan that they were driving would fly open. McCoy and T-Red would jump out. Both guns would be on safety and not fire. The female with Maul would flee from the vehicle. Rat would start dumping shots into the whip. T-Red would unjam his strap and join in on the firing. 3 and G would rub the shooting into the face of their rivals by having t-shirts made of the victim. To the surprise of the 39ers, Maul would survive this attack. It wouldn't be long after the attack that both 3 and G and the 39ers would be indicted. One day after the WDSUI team broke the story about another sweeping gang indictment in just over a month, the district attorney and the NOPD are speaking out. Last month, 15 members of the One Tenors gang were charged in a racketeering indictment involving guns, drugs and murder. Today, similar charges against 20 men with the 3NG gang, also based uptown. Two men are still on the run, however, Kentrell Hickerson and Kevin Lynch. WDSU anchor Rachel Wolf tells us more about the DA's plans and what public defenders is, are saying about the case. We will use every weapon in our arsenal to bring them to justice. Orleans Parish District Attorney Leon Canazero was firm as he described a 30-count racketeering indictment against 20 men in the 3 and G gang. He says the group conspired to distribute illegal drugs and used violence to gain and maintain control over the area where it operated near 3rd Street in South Galvez. They don't show any breaks to the people of this community. We're going to give them no breaks either. Authorities say the 3 and G gang is responsible for at least 10 murders in the last five years. At the ruthless, reckless, cowardly behavior of these gangs. The people of New Orleans have said enough is enough. This indictment is the fourth indictment stemming from the multi-agency gang unit. While these cases are more difficult to investigate and prosecute, it allows us to present the whole story to the jury so that they can see the consequences of a pattern of, acti of activity rather than looking at a single crime. Getting these cases to court could prove complex, though, because defendants in each case will be tried together, and every defendant needs their own attorney. Get ready, because the, this, is, this is what we see to be a very successful sort of prosecution. On your side in Orleans Parish, Rachel Wolf, WDSU News. Since the gang unit was formed, Canizero says in state court alone there have been indictments against 35 defendants for 81 different counts and 26 murders.
Just when Zipper thought he had gotten away with crushing Kareem, he would be ran down on in front of Jazz Daiquiri shop and be deleted. And tonight about the man police said was the intended target of Saturday's mass shooting. Jeremiah Lee was connected to a New Orleans street gang. And while most of the major players of that gang are now in prison, investigative reporter Mike Pearlstein shows how Lee managed to remain on the street. This man, Jeremiah Lee, was described as the intended target of Saturday night's massacre on Claiborne. He also was considered an affiliate of the notorious street gang known as 3NG. I think the fact that someone decided to shoot into a crowd of 10 people that injured seven and killed three speaks to what the reality is regarding gang violence. Lee's rap sheet shows a conviction for possession of marijuana in municipal court in 2009 but three subsequent felony cases were still pending when Lee was gunned down. In the first of those arrests in 2010, police say Lee was dealing cocaine with this man, Alfred Clay, an admitted member of the sprawling 3NG gang, named for their connection to the neighborhood around 3rd and Galvez. Clay is now serving a 15-year prison sentence as a senior member of the gang. That time includes a five-year sentence for the cocaine bust with Lee but prosecution of Lee has repeatedly been delayed by questions about his mental competency. While that case dragged on, Lee was arrested two more times for distribution of cocaine in 2012 and for discharging a gun during a family dispute in 2015. Lee was scheduled to appear in court on August 15th in each of those three open cases, but whoever was gunning for him made sure he would not be around to answer to the charges. Police Chief Michael Harrison said the two gunmen Saturday were wearing gloves and hoods when they chased Lee into a crowd, first firing indiscriminately, then standing over his body to fire some more. Already serving time for unrelated charges, it wouldn't be until 2021 and tomorrow will be charged with the crime. The horrific mass shooting back in 2018. Ten people shot on a busy stretch of South Claiborne Avenue on a Saturday night. Three of those victims died. Now, more than three years later, New Orleans police announce an arrest in the case. Mike Pearlstein has the story. That's right, 32-year-old Jamal Smith has been named as one of two gunmen in that shooting. Records show he has been in custody since 2019 on separate federal charges. Those federal charges include dealing marijuana, being a felon with a firearm, and possession of a firearm while drug trafficking. His rap sheet also shows prior convictions and prison time for earlier gun and drug convictions. Smith has now been named by the NOPD as a perpetrator in one of the most shocking mass shootings to take place in the city in the past decade. Three people were killed that night, including the presumed target, 28-year-old Jeremiah Lee, and two innocent bystanders, 27-year-old Taisha Watkins and 38-year-old Kershaw Jackson. Seven others were wounded. Superintendent Sean Ferguson was not available for an interview today, but in a tweet he wrote, the detectives in the homicide unit are to be commended for their diligence and determination in gathering evidence to charge this individual with this terrible crime. This is another example of how we don't stop until we bring individuals accused of violent acts to justice. Now, I did talk to police about the case, particularly whether they've identified a second suspect. They said that the case is very active and they would release more information as it becomes available.